in front of you there is a rook end game where Wyatt is a pawn up and is going to promote that pawn on from a7 to a8. And of course he has to make the right right moves. For example, if he makes a move like just basically any move like rook king to b8, then he's going to get checkmate after rook uh, h3 to h8. So he has to look out for that checkmate threat. And of course, if he plays a move like king to d7, then after rook h7, things will obviously get complicated. So he has to make the right moves. And um, so the first move that we're going to look at is, well, of course, the correct move is rook b7 check. I ran out of time because these exercises are time, so we looked at rook b7, and now uh, there's actually a mate threat over here, so we have to look out. So he plays. So the correct move is actually to put the rook on h7. What? Because if he takes the rook, then after a8 check with the queen, the rook temporary sacrifice over here didn't really matter. So this is the way to play. And here we have to get rid of that king, so he checks, and then he puts his white puts his king, king on b7, and now there's a check. King c7, and, and another check to drive the king away. Uh, then king b6, and he doesn't go back or to c6, but he puts. The King on a6, and that and those were the correct moves because now we've checked why simply puts the rook on a5, and there are no more checks. Here is another rook ending, and um, again, it's on time, so I will just talk a little bit about this end, end game. Well, we see that White, of course, is trying to push the pawn up the board, so the first move is a4. Now of course the black king tries to come closer, so we play king b2, king b3, and now it's, it looks like there's no way to make progress, but we just put the rook on a5, b5, and then we push the pawn, we give a check, uh, rook to d8, then we, we simply move up the king, two squares, Black tries to give as many checks as possible, and here we try to, let's see, probably push the pawn again. <coughs> okay, so we ran out of time. So let's take a look at, make this move fast one more time, like this. A5, rook between, A7, and then with the king A6, there's no way to <coughs> stop the pawn. The, king, the black king is too far away, and the next move, of course, will be king to B7. And black has to give up their rook for, for the pawn, and of course, it's an easy checkmate with the rook. Here is <coughs> a third rook and game. And again, black white is trying to push the pawn. And here we see that black is threatening the rook on f1, so he has to move. He puts it on f4. You might wonder if he could have played rook to uh, b1, but then uh, black could have blocked that pawn way up here. And, and of course, Start pushing the king also up the board. So the correct move is okay. We run out of time, so we have to do it again. Rook f4, then to a4. So the rook will 
almost pretty much be on the same file all the time. The A file. Check. And now it's time to start pushing that bar. I think that uh, these moves make sense without much explanation really. And here there's no way for black to stop. White's next move will be B7. And if you place a move like Rook E7, then simply King A8, checks, then simply promote. There's no way. And, uh, and of course we see that the White King is on the A file, so there are no checks from you know this file, and no nor from the side. Like like I said, Rook E7, or there's just one check or two, but the pawn always comes in between. This one <coughs> is actually very actually easier to understand than the other ones, perhaps. Um, again, it's white to move, so. The aim is to get that pawn up the board, so it so basically just start pushing it up, pushing it like this. And as you can see, this game or end, end game actually uh, has it's very quite similar to the previous one. Not much, no, not so many differences. And here, after rook b8, there's no way to stop that pawn. Quite simple. So if we take a look one more time. King b2, b3, push the pawn, push the pawn, king b4. And with rook on b8 to hold that file, drive the rook away, push the pawn, king b5, the rook in between, push the pawn, and uh, King to six, and now support the pawn. This is a little bit different. <coughs> it looks like White makes an in-between move, basically. Rook is Rook A to se uh, Rook A A to A seven. H seven. Black tries to harass him a little bit, but that's no problem. And again, just put the king in safety. Push the pawn, support the pawn, rook in between, and that's it. There's no way to stop. Like for example, if rook to h2, then simply promotes, and if you check, white can easily give up the queen for the rook because he already has a rook. So one more look, rook a7, move the rook away. So we'll finish up with this <coughs> last um, exercise. Um, first, white protects the pawn, and he starts moving his king close to the pawn, and in between, we're basically close to the pawn, rook in between, push the pawn, avoid the check, and here white basically just forces the rook to move. And there's no reason to start checking. For example, if rook d7, then back to g6, and if another check, just move away from or closer to the enemy rook, and then just promote the pawn. There's no way to make any progress there for black. And the same can be said about the the other stuff as well, by the way. Anyway, I just want to say that I, th I believe in end game study. It will uh, make a lot of difference in your game. And if you're serious about chess and want to improve, that's the way to go. Okay, I hope you enjoy these fast exercises, and see you soon.